So here we are on another late night session discussing George Webb Swigert's elaborate soap opera. For anybody who may be new to my channel, I am Bravo Von Mueller. I wear many hats. Some of you know me as the wartime consigliere. You may also know that I am a glitch in the matrix, for I have no job, I have no pension, and I have no hope. That's why I am the wartime consigliere for the 95 million Americans who are out of the workforce. Yes, that's who I represent. I represent almost 100 million Americans who have no job and have no hope. I am here to claw back what we deserve. We deserve half of everything they stole. But that's for another day. That story is for another day. Today, we are discussing the George Webb Swigert elaborate soap opera. Today, we even found George was talking about the Council on Foreign Relations. You really cannot go into all the problems in America unless you bring up the Council on Foreign Relations. So it's obvious that he would bring that up. We're going to go over this chart just very, very briefly. What you'll notice on these charts that lead everywhere, it's all connected. Like all the banking systems and the corporations, they're all connected. But what you'll find out is the head, the very head of every corporation, including these corporations, is a dual citizen. This is what George Webb Swigert and Jason Goodman will never, never, ever tell you that everybody at the top of the organization is a dual citizen and they control everything that way. There may be 10,000 people in that organization. All you need to do is control the top with a dual citizen. This is very, very important because no matter what George and Jason tell you, they will never tell you this. And, of course, they have been known to promote Bitcoin blockchain digital currency. That is to be expected. If they're going to be part of the government system, how, we don't really know yet. But if they're part of the system, well, that is the agenda. That the Federal Reserve banking cartel, which is over 100 years old now, people are starting to catch on to the scam and it needs to be modified a bit, you know, like Bitcoin. But Bitcoin is just a trial run. Bitcoin is just an experiment, a CIA experiment. When the real government blockchain digital currency comes, I'm sure that they will be promoting it if they're part of the system. But we're not here to talk about blockchain, currency, digital currency, even though it's important, that's not something they focus on. Remember, this story today, we are independent observers and we're just watching. What are they up to? That's really all we do. We have to keep a close eye on them to see what they're up to. Because if we don't keep an eye on them, if we don't document what they're saying, then we could lose track of what their true agenda is. Now, they have been promoting Donald Trump and Putin and Ivanka. They even put a plug in there today in one of their videos. And I've noticed that Jason has plugged Donald Trump a lot. But he actually, when he put the plug in for Donald Trump today, when he promoted Donald Trump, he threw Putin in there, which does not surprise me. And, of course, he also put in Ivanka. This tells me that there's a strong, strong connection. In this PSYOP soap opera, there's a strong connection to Donald Trump somehow. Or it's a strong connection to somebody who supports Donald Trump. Because, quite frankly, nobody in their right mind could ever support Ivanka or Jared Kushner. I mean, you talk about two rich, spoiled children. No, I mean, so if, he, if Jason has to put a plug in there for Ivanka and Putin, well, then we're, getting, we're connecting dots. Now, who we have not heard about is Mitt Romney. 
in this story. I don't think. Correct me. If, if anybody's out there heard about Mitt Romney in this story, correct me if I'm wrong. We have not really heard about the Mormons or Mitt Romney. Why am I bringing it up? I got this gut feeling. I don't know what it is yet. I just got a gut feeling about Mitt Romney and Bain Company, all the companies they own. Really, all it is is investment. All it is is the money that comes out of that Federal Reserve region. Remember, we're talking about Federal Reserve banking cartel. They have regions, regional banks. And the Mormon is a very, very powerful region. Mitt Romney is part of it. Bain and Company, you would not believe the computer software intelligence company they're buying up. I just have a gut feeling that some down, somewhere down the road that Bain Company and Mitt Romney is going to enter this picture. I'm not sure why I feel it. I just feel it. We will, we will not dwell on that subject. Okay, so back to this chart. Remember I was telling you all the head people, the top of the corporations are all dual citizens. I told you that George would never tell you that. Well, that kind of plays into something else he said today that ties into the same framework. Today, George said that the uh, Mujahideen is basically ISIS. George said that the old school CIA, old school people, apparently use the term Mujahideen instead of ISIS. He didn't say anything about Israel or the Mossad, but if we do a little bit of history here, and we find out that indeed, yes, Israel did provide weapons, arms, and training to the Mujahideen. So this is not anything that you don't already know. You already know that ISIS will never, ever attack Israel. Most people know that ISIS has a connection to Israel, but I just thought it was funny that the way George tells the story, that they, those guys in the old school, they call ISIS Mujahideen. It's just another cover story to protect the masters. They never really want to talk about the masters by way of deception. Now, you know, they'll always have a response. If you, if you talk about this in their live stream, they'll have a clever response. But indeed... One day, they might even come out and say it. Yeah, damn it, we support the master. What are you going to do about it? One day, but not now. Right now, they're going to take it easy. Another thing, remember, George worked for a McAfee, but when it was called a different company. And I never heard of the McAfee blogs, but a lot of this ties into McAfee and Network Associates. We'll try to get to that later. Now, George is also breaking the story of purple shovel and chem rings the story about uh, a weapons depot i think it's called all guns in bulgaria now most of this information is coming from a reporter named diana diana a bulgarian reporter there her name is diana george calls her the supermodel she's very very pretty so Again, this is a breaking, it could be a breaking story. I don't know how long it's been. You've got a reporter, a pretty reporter out there. Where she's getting this information, we don't know yet, but George is running with it. George is running with the story. I'm just going to mention it. We're going to document it. But this is the story that George is going to try to go forward with. Purple shovel, all guns in Bulgaria. Oh, he claims that a lot of the guns that are confiscated in America are ending up over in Bulgaria at all guns. Now, this is probably part of the story that I'm interested in, if it is true. Because the city, st cities and states and governments, they're confiscating guns. Lots of guns get turned in. And are these guns actually being shipped to Bulgaria? I don't know. But it is an interesting story. And uh, we'll have to keep on looking into it. That's the good thing about keeping an eye on George Webb Swigert. We do keep abreast with current events, breaking stories. If he does come up with something wrong, well, we 
caught, we well, I haven't caught him. I mean, people we've caught him on small details that he was mistaken with, but no big mistakes has he made. So that's one of the good things about keeping up with George is we find out we keep up with current events because I as I said before, George is a seriously very very good current events man. I mean, he knows all of this. He knows so much information. A lot of it goes back to the company he worked for. And now I want to touch on that because I think it's interesting. Well, let me clarify. I think it's interesting, but many people might think this is boring. But I apologize. We must go over it. Now, George did not work for McAfee until around the 2000 era, 2000 year. Uh, McAfee had already left by then. McAfee had a heart attack in 93. So the crazy McAfee was gone, and he handed over day-to-day -day operations to Bill Larson. Now, George brings up that he used to party with Bill Larson and all the crew in Boston. Now, before George got involved with that company, they changed the name to Network Associates probably maybe a couple years before George got there. So what's interesting here is before Bill Larson got to McAfee, he actually worked for Sun Microsystems. And guess who George Webb Swigert worked for? Sun Microsystems, about the same time era in the not late 1980s. So the reason why I'm bringing this out there, somebody might have some more information on Bill Larson's because there's one thing about these people. Now, George also says that the CIA came in, and I don't have time to go into the Russians. Let me see. I think George said that the Russians brought in approximately 14 people, and I, I, I don't really have all the details on but George is familiar with the Russians that were brought in to that company, Network Associates. George was there. George partied with Bill Larson. George is saying that the CIA was involved with that. This is, this is interesting stuff. This is pertinent. I mean, if the CIA is involved in Mac, the old McAfee company, which is Network Associates. Okay, look at this. The former chief financial officer. About the same time, now the same time George was there, and I'm sure George probably talks about this guy. I don't know how to pronounce the name. But this guy was caught in fraud. So, I don't know why I'm putting this in there. but um, And I did not get to check to see if they put that guy on probation. If this is clearly a CIA operation, it's a good chance that the uh, chief financial officer probably got a little slap on the wrist in probation. I forgot to check on that. Uh, maybe I'll do that later. The main thing I'm trying to tell you here is George has a connection to this company, Bill Larson's. George says that the CIA came in and basically, basically took it over. They actually brought some Russians in. This is where George has got a lot of his intel. Okay, so let's go to George's uh, resume. Yes, George did work at Sun Microsystems from 88 to 95. Now, it's okay, so George ends up at Network General in 95. Now, this is very interesting. Network General in 1995. Now, two years later, McAfee buys Network General. So, George is actually at Network General before McAfee buys it. Now, who's at McAfee? Bill Larson. So, then Bill Larson's and McAfee buy the company George is at. Now, remember, Bill Larson's worked at the same company George did back in the 80s, Sun Microsystems. We don't have a lot on William Lars Larson's. The reason why I want to pop this out there is who knows? Maybe this is one of the dots we have to connect. But there are some connections there. B George does not deny any of this. What, what I find interesting is George says that he parted with these guys in Boston. Now, that's probably what makes me think about Mitt Romney, Bain, and company, because they're pretty strong there in Boston.
Okay, we're just trying to connect the dots. A lot of this may be really, really boring and stupid. We're almost done with it. Let me see if there's anything else I can uh, remember. Okay, why don't we go a little bit more into Larson's. Now, apparently, Larson's is a native of Massachusetts. Okay, right here, he's an aggressive guy. Now, back then, Larson's was sort of a famous guy. What confuses me about this is he just sort of dropped out of the picture. He's now a private investor. I'll repeat. Bill Larson's is a private investor, and he's been in George's life for a long time. You see where I'm going with this? I'm, I'm not saying that Bill Larson's is the money man behind the whole thing. I'm just saying he's a private investor now. He's keeping a low profile no images on the internet. Hey, we're talking, we're talking intelligent stuff here. But let's move on. This is getting, getting a little boring. Okay, now why don't we get to some of the juicy stuff. You know, the fights going on between the teams. As you realize, I'm not even supposed to be in this equation. M make sure you make a note of that. The Jason team, the Defongo team... They never ever mention my name, do they? Because I'm not supposed to be in this show. And that's correct. I am an independent observer. There have been attempts to actually shove me out of the way. But here we go anyhow. So now we're getting to the juicy part. Many people will call this like professional wrestling. You know how the old day that professional wrestling was fake? It was all set up? I cannot rule that out. But it is getting a little juicy. Now, apparently, Jason is trying to say that maybe Defongo is Guccifer 2. I have no idea where Jason's getting this stuff. If, if it's all professional ra uh, wrestling, if this is all fake uh, professional wrestling stuff, then none of it really matters. It's all for theatrics. It's all drama, you know, made for TV stuff. But here we're going to tie, we're going to dive into what the uh, current events are between Defongo and Jason, because def apparently, if you take their words for it, Defongo and the White Rabbit are extremely unhappy because Jason burned the White Rabbit. So now Defongo is on a crusade to expose. Jason Goodman. Now, Jason Goodman gets mad because Defango apparently intercepted one of their contacts. Now, remember, we talked about the Bulgarian supermodel. I don't even know what her name is. But apparently, Jason is claiming that Defango went in there and intercepted one of their messages. Defango pretended to be Jason, and then Jason went crazy on that. That's totally unacceptable. You cannot... Get in between me and my contacts. Here, what's her name? The De, Diana. And I use this character here. I don't know if it's the White Rabbit or Defungo, but somebody's using that fake character there with the blue hat on. Uh, you know, it's a spoof, a spoof on Jason. But I don't know. This is all drama. This is all way too much drama for me. But we have to document it. And because of all this drama which started when Jason burned White Rabbit. So, uh, here we are. Okay, somebody did leave me a message, and I think we need to go over this. It's, this is all information out there on the World Wide Web. web. So I'm not, I'm not doxing anybody here, I don't think. Uh, this is just common knowledge. See, what my connection is, I want to find out how did Jason get established in Hollywood? Normally it's through, I thought it might be through his parents. But we can see right now it's probably not through his parents. So if I had to guess, Jason's contacts through Hollywood may be an uncle or a cousin. We still have to find that out. Why is it important? Well, I'll tell you why it's important that we find out who's, who was the contact that put Jason in Hollywood. What uncle was it? What cousin was it? Because that's an important name in the equation. 
Because going forward, if this turns into a reality TV show or if it turned into a B-rated documentary, you can bet your bottom dollar that whoever it was that helped Jason into Hollywood, they're going to be in on it as producers. I know how this stuff works. So I don't think any of this is, um, this is all stuff that's already been out there. New skin. Oh, one thing, at least Lee Stranahan actually, I think, worked for Jason. Now that might be something new here. I thought that maybe Lee Stranahan and Jason worked together, but it's possible that Lee Stranahan worked for Jason, and of course that changes the picture a little bit, doesn't it? Yes, totally. In my mind, it changes. It may not change anything to Lee and Jason, but if it makes a difference whether you're the boss or you're the worker, it makes a big difference. Okay, now talk about big dogs. Uh, remember this chart again, I forgot to mention. Look at the name at the bottom there, Amy Goodman. Now, apparently, Amy Goodman is not related to Jason. It's what Jason says, they're not related. But they did meet in a coffee shop, didn't they? I don't believe in coincidences. I just need, people need to know that Amy Goodman is a big dog. She's not to be trusted. We talked about her before. Okay, I don't think that we've actually documented clearly enough that at one time in the game that George and Jason were affiliated with uh, the Info Wars and, you know, Alex Jonestein, Mike Cernovich here. So the reason why I think we should bring this up again is because it's getting clearer and clearer as Jason is promoting Donald Trump and Putin and Ivanka. Info Wars, doing the same thing. So that's our connection. Info Wars is somehow getting paid by the Trump people because Info Wars is doing nothing but promoting and being a prostitute for Trump. Every time I turn around, Jason Goodman is promoting Trump, Ivanka, being a prostitute for them. That has to be the connection. Now, George is staying, George and Jason are staying away from InfoWars now, probably because of the Mars controversy. You know, sending, you know, kidnapping the children, sending them to Mars to be a slave colony. I think they need to stay away. They're probably saying, hey, let's stay away from this crew for a while. But you still have a standard operating procedure. Selling something. Selling the vitamins. So they're, they're working off of each other somehow. But the connection is Donald Trump. I'll leave you with that. That's the connection, Trump.